Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, behind me are the Hobgoods, Dr. Hobgood and his son Logan, and we're going to give a demonstration of actually how a block is performed. Uh, Logan's going to be uh, our patient. Dr. Hobgood is going to use the monitor behind next to Logan, and we're going to explain how we actually do this. And and this is just an example of one of the impressively high tech pieces of equipment that we use to ensure that we do things in our anesthesia department, like we do everywhere in the hospital, as good as you can get anywhere in the United States. Um, so state-of-the-art equipment, state-of-the-art training comes together, and we're going to show you how that works. Absolutely, uh, to keep you the safest possible, right? Perfectly safe. You mm -hmm. just can't get safer and you can't get more effective anywhere. And it's because of the high-tech investment that the hospital has made into our departments. And yeah. hired people like Dr. Oh, Hobgood. Beyond, beyond question. So <laughs> show us this uh, piece of, explain to us what we're going to be doing. Okay. And we'll zoom in on the monitor in a second. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate what's called a supraclavicular nerve block, which is the most common nerve block that I do and my colleagues do for the upper extreme, or the, the arm surgery, the, the elbow hand surgery that Dr. Perlmutter does. Um, and this is an ultrasound machine that we use um, to visualize the anatomy and the structures that we're going to be um, placing the, <coughs> the numbing medicine uh, uh, in. I must start by saying once this, the patient goes to the operating room, uh, all this is done after the patient is sedated um, uh, with medications so the patient will not experience any of this process. Even though Logan's awake for this, um, this is this is not a live needle insertion. This is just going to be showing the the anatomy and the process. So first, we use um, a gel that we have to put on the probe to allow it to penetrate the sound waves to be able to penetrate the tissue. Um, but to take a second and backtrack, an ultrasound machine sends sound waves deep into the body. Correct. Correct. And on the monitor, you'll actually see the reflection of those sound waves back Correct. into the transducer that you're going to put on his skin. Correct. And that gives you a black and white type image, sometimes color image, of the specific anatomy that you're aiming that probe at. Right. Okay. So the sound waves go in, they bounce back, and the different densities of the tissues have different uh, frequencies of the waves bouncing back and that difference is, shows up in different shades of gray. So we can see dense, uh, dense um, structures are more bright and uh, less dense structures are more dark. So this is the probe. Sim simply place it lightly on the, on the patient's skin. And when he says supraclavicular Bach, people, uh, that means above the clavicle. That's right, above the clavicle. And so he's really aiming that probe at the bundle of nerves that come out of the neck that will go under the clavicle um, and then go into your arm. And so do you leave that probe in place as you insert the needle for the block so you know exactly where you're putting it? Correct, I leave, I leave the probe, I find my image, and if you can see on the screen, um, I've, I've got my image in view, and what I always want to find is a, is a, is a blood vessel with an artery uh, that you can probably see pulsating on the right-hand side of the screen. Mm -hmm. There's a bright white line underneath that, which is the, the rib. Um, and then there's an, so this bright, bright white line is the rib, and this other bright white line is the lung. Um, and we really want to know that because we don't want to be anywhere close to the lung. Mm -hmm. And we also don't want to be close to that artery. We're going to be close to it, but we, we don't want to be in that artery. And then the nerves, the nerve bundles live right around this artery. They kind of look like honeycomb structures, little circles, little dark circles. So as I have this image, if I were doing this in real time in the operating room, then, then I would place the needle underneath this probe and watch my needle very carefully and slowly come into view and I place that needle right underneath these nerve bundles and inject and you would them. See the, you would see the needle because it's metal and it would show up as a bright It would bright, be straight very line. bright, yeah, very bright. I inject the numbing medicine and I will see the numbing medicine fill and lift those nerve bundles upward 
and that's how I know that the, the medication is getting in the right place. And then usually I'll put an injection at the bottom under the artery and I'll come back up and I'll get one, one or two more injections at the top to make sure that I adequately anesthetize all those nerve bundles. So this is done as a sterile procedure before the surgery. Uh, the patient's very comfortable during it. It's done with a very small needle and it's done under perfect guidance. Correct. So you see ex essentially exactly where you're putting the numbing medicine. Exactly. And that numbing medicine can, la can last for five or six hours with standard medicine. And if you use long-acting numbing medicines, how long can, like this medicine called Expiril, which the hospital lets us use very nicely, how long will that make somebody's arm numb? Uh, it can be up to three days. Which the, is wonderful. The, the medication I use in the operating room called Repivacaine, will give patients anywhere from 18 to 24 hours of dense anesthesia, complete numbness and, and, and anesthesia of the arm. I use that because it allows me to have excellent surgical conditions for Dr. Perlmutter for surgeries that could last for hours. And then also once the surgery is over, that patient's arm is gonna stay numb the rest of the day and mostly, you know, and probably through the night. Um, and they'll be pain free without the need to take any medication for pain. Indeed, most of my patients wake up from your and your partner's blocks and have no feeling in their arm the next morning and often the next morning after that. And uh, that could be a little scary for them, but the truth of it is they have zero pain and that's a wonderful thing. So, but this, um, this procedure is safe. Um, you know, the ultrasound has, has revolutionized this, this, this process. Uh, because like Dr. Perlmutter said, we can see all the anatomy, all the, all the vital structures, all the nerves, know exactly where the needle is at all times, know exactly where the medication's going. And I always tell my patients, if for some reason I don't see what I need to see on this screen because of some patients have different anatomy or different, um, just, or, or just made differently, um, and, I, and if I don't feel like I can comfortably and safely do the block, then I won't do it. Um, right. But there's that's always very, a, there's that's always very, a plan B. There's right? always a plan B. But there's, always a plan B. But that's rare. But in fact, it's so rare that I don't believe I've had maybe one or two patients where that has actually been the case. I think 99.9% .9 of my patients have had successful blocks. So it's a very dependable. Uh, a, a extraordinarily successful procedure uh, that makes me tell patients that um, what I usually say is you're not, you're not going to know if you're on foot or horseback for the surgery. <laughs> <laughs> you're just not going to know anything. You will have no pain when you wake up. Um, and you may take a while to wake up in the recovery room because there's no pain stimulating you to wake up. Yeah. You know, so it's an extraordinarily comfortable procedure uh, and it really does eliminate uh, most of the fears that people have. So, uh, generally speaking, with th the help of Dr. Hobgood's team, I can honestly tell patients that the only discomfort they're going to have the entire experience of the entire day is the little tiny pinch they're going to get maybe on the back of their hand on their arm where they have a very safe IV started at the very beginning as soon as you show up by exceptionally trained nurses. Amazing. Um, and once that little tiny two-second pinch is done, that's typically the only discomfort you have for days. It's amazing. Super. Right, because yeah. not only does my nerve block last almost 24 hours, Dr. Perlmutter um, almost always does another nerve block at the end of his surgeries where he will numb the nerves that are closer to the surgical site so that when the arm the entire arm wakes up from my block and the patient's able to move the arm and feel the arm again, then where the surgery was done, that, that area will remain numb for a couple more days, two or three more days. So we essentially go through that whole acute pain phase without any pain, without any need for narcotics or pain medications. And by the time Dr. Perlmutter's uh, nerve block medication wears off, the patients through that phase, that acute phase pain, and they can get by with a couple of Tylenol or, or Advil.